I wanted to show you and talk about some of the uh, drilling samples that came out of the hole while they were drilling. This is the first uh, couple of feet, and it's really just loose sand. The reason it's held together like this is because it's mixed with some of that drilling mud, which is a clay-like uh, consistency to it, and so, you know, it's, it's holding together. Um, but it's really just sort of loose sand. Then, as they got down into the harder ground, you can see uh, it started to come out in chunks, and the size and shape of the chunk are sort of based upon the drilling head, the drill head speed and depth and you know and pressure. And so, um, as I as I understand it, if the if the little chips that are coming out of the hole are sort of thin like this, then it could be that the drilling head is is not moving down fast. There's not enough pressure being applied. If on the other hand, it's really big chunks, it may be too fast. Um, so anyway, so for the first, say, 40 feet or so, we find this sort of brown, and I understand the camera doesn't really show it because the stuff isn't wet anymore, but it's sort of a tan colored, you know, sand and light clay mixture. And then, oh, right about 48 feet, is when you started seeing a mixture of what they call a blue clay and brown clay. And the, the valley that we're in has two aquifers. There's one above the other. The one that's on above is called the unconfined aquifer. And it's where most people drill their wells into. The one below it is older uh, and is separated by a heavy layer of this blue clay. And it's known as the uh, confined aquifer. Uh, so you have the unconfined up top, confined below, and the confined aquifer is usually only accessed if you're doing a, you need a lot of water for agricultural uses or something like that. And both the aquifers in this valley are separated by a very thick, very definitely um, identifiable kind of clay they call blue clay. Now this looks more gray but believe me, when it was coming out of the hole, it looked kind of blue-gray. And uh, so for beginning, it, I think it was 48 feet, we began seeing this clay. Now, 48 feet is about the depth at which the river bottom begins down there in the distance. And so that would sort of make sense because it looks like what we might be seeing here is old river bottom deposit, a real thick clay. Um, and then that blue clay continues for something like, I don't know, 30 feet or something like that. And it really made uh, the drillers nervous because when you're, when you're having to, uh, th there was a, a suspicion there that they might have been drilling into the confined aquifer, which, you know, generally you don't want to do. Fortunately, our permit did not specify whether uh, you know we were whether we could drill into the confined or unconfined aquifers only so we just kept drilling I'm glad we did because we wound up out of that blue clay and back into this brown clay again uh, as you can see the pieces are uh, unlike the blue clay which is really thick and dense the pieces are bigger and they were coming out you know larger and then first sign of a water bearing uh, layer is where we had this sand-like uh, stuff. Again, this is being held together with this drilling mud, but really it's just grains of fine sand. Uh, that's that's a good indicator of a water-bearing deposit. So we, there's one layer. Here's another one with uh, a little bit further down with clay and sand, and then more of the clay again, and then a very definite layer of gravel. It's fine gravel. It's almost uh, like what you would call a anthill sand and uh, you know how the ants bring up these little pieces of gravel and stuff when they build their homes that's a very definite uh, water bearing deposit and then sand and clay mixed back to the clay and then more of the gravel mixed with clay uh, and then back into the clay with a little bit of sand and it was at that point that they stopped drilling at about 120 feet because this layer this layer and this layer uh, 
should give plenty of water. And uh, they assure us that we'll be pleased with the results. They say that when you're drilling a well, that what you're looking for are deposits like this that indicate gravel. Um, because the same sort of phenomenon occurs under the ground as you see it on top of the ground. If you notice a riverbed or anywhere where water passes by, you'll see that it'll deposit larger pieces of gravel like this along a shore, you know, or just push it along. And when you see that underground, it's similar. It means that water is passing through this, washing away the finer clay and providing a nice permeable gravel through which the water travels. So anyway, uh, should, be, uh, should be a good well. We find out tomorrow um, how much it's gonna water in terms of gallons per minute, uh, recharge rate and things like that, static water level, all that good stuff that we're gonna get after they develop it and we'll just see what happens. First piece of casing, this is the one that's perforated. Last piece is going in, last piece of casing. This last one's steel. A few still tapping screws, but I mean, the casing's going all the way to the bottom of the hole anyway, right? So yeah, it's, it's like just gonna, it's gonna sit gonna on it, yeah. For a lifetime. Right. Just as long as it takes us to get the, you know, that 20 feet down to the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> 